I understand that there are some questions which were asked and are in writing, and Jonathan has them. I'll request to Jonathan to read them and then give it to me, so I'll try to answer those questions. I don't think the two microphones are going to work, so I'm just going to talk as loud as I can, and then Ishwar will read the question again uh, when he repeats it. When souls pick destinies at causal plane, how do they coordinate with other souls? Or are other players in our story just created experience? How do we know that we are not an experience in someone else's story? When souls pick destinies at causal plane, how do they coordinate with other souls? Or other players in our story just created experiences? How do we know that we are not an experience in someone else's story? Correct answer, there is no someone else. There is only one self. All other selves are created by one self. There is one soul. All souls are created from one soul and are within that one soul. It's just an experience of the many within one soul. This experience, which I can't call experience because not in time, takes place in your true home. True home gives you the real truth. That there is only one total consciousness, never split. It's still total, remains total. And the experience of the many souls is the experience of one soul. And each one of us right now, thinking we are all separated, are participating in that one soul. We never left it. When will you discover that? Go not only above the mind, go above the individuated souls. That is the true home where you discover the whole show. What's happening here is happening there. Nothing is happening anywhere else except within that one soul. All rest is created by that one soul. There are no others to coordinate with. It looks strange right now, sitting in this physical world. We are so many people. How can we be one? We are not one in that sense. As an experience, we are many. The experiencer is one. When you have a dream at night, and you see many people there, and you ask each other, are we all dreaming? Or only one is dreaming? They say, no, no. how can all be dreaming? We are all together here. You wake up. Only one dreamer. All the others were part of the same dream. It's identical to that. When you, supposing you think that this journey, spiritual journey, awareness is waking up, a series of wakefulnesses, because we have been called in deep sleep, one dream, then dream took place within the dream, then dream took place within the dream. We have had six levels of dreams. The last level is right here. Maybe there's one more, maybe two more. Dreams within dreams, we can even have now. When you wake up, all the people you saw, all the objects you saw, everything you saw was part of your one dreamer, just part of one dream. If you wake up, it will again be one dream, but many other dreamers. You wake up again, one dream with many others, and finally one dreamer, no others, all others will be part of that dream. So that is why there is no problem of coordination at all. It's a complete creation every time we are here. This was such a big problem for me, not talking of souls. I was talking of karma. That when we say we have karma with people, and we come back and meet the same people again. I was thinking what kind of computer that lord of death or lord of birth, rebirth is working on that he can tie up thousands of people we meet now and then he can readjust that they can all come back again in our life again just to pay off karma. It's very difficult. Here they have in the lottery, they give I think six numbers and there are millions of choices of numbers. And sometimes one person, sometimes nobody wins a lottery because the odds are so much against just finding out six numbers out of 80. It looks very simple. It's very difficult. Look at the odds that will be trillions and trillions of that. Odds of having the same number of people coming together for, for getting their karma paid off. It took me a long time to realize when we come, 
we think they are the same people, we create the same people. Each one carries a complete universe, including the karma that plays out, it's within the same totality of consciousness and that is why there is no coordination needed at all. It's your own experience that you generated and when you meet people, it's part of your experience. It's cause and effect is applying to your experience and nobody has to share that experience. Are there any others? Eventually you'll find out there was no other. The self that you are feeling inside you right now, the self that is making you see this world is the same self as totality. Let me give you an example. Supposing you have a dream. In the dream, you are young, very small. You see, I am a little child. I, I thought I was a big person. How could become a child? In a dream, you can do that. Is that child in the dream the same self? That's the big one who's dreaming or different? You see the body is a child, the self is the same. The self that is awake in dream remains the same self, no matter whether it's a change of form or not. That is why there was a gave the example of a Chinese philosopher who had a dream that he was a butterfly. Fahin dreamt that he was a butterfly and he was flying in a garden which looked so much different, so much more real than the gardens he had seen. The flowers were alive, radiating light and color. He had never seen them before. He was flipping around with his wings as a butterfly, seeing that garden. And he said, this is reality, compared to what he saw as a human being. And then he woke up to the dream. He then began to wonder, am I really far in a human being? Who had a dream that he was a butterfly, or am I really a butterfly? Who is now dreaming that I am Fahim? He told his friends, he was a philosopher, he consulted other philosophers. He said, I had such a strange dream that I was a butterfly. They said, Don't be stupid, you can't be a butterfly, you're a human being. You should say you saw a butterfly. He said, I never saw a butterfly. I was flying. The same self that is Swahin was the same butterfly and the self could not be changed. You will be surprised no matter what condition you are, dreaming, awake, higher levels, highest level, same self. Self will never change. What will happen will be you realize the dreamlike nature of creation and you ultimately find you are that one who created it all. There is nothing outside of it. So there is no question of coordination if you know the truth. It's all happening within one totality of consciousness, one single consciousness. I don't want to use the word single because that means there may be more than one. There is no more than one. That's where we really want to. You have everything there. Some people think we have come away from there, that we have been dropped from there into this physical world and we have to go back there and the physical world won't be there. Nothing is outside of that. A perfect living master is one who is operating even as a human being from there. So therefore he is in contact with all levels of consciousness 24-7. He is not remembering something that he had experienced, that is all mental. A perfect living master is in touch with all levels of consciousness including totality at all times. Therefore he knows this is part of the same. Everything that is happening at any level of consciousness is all happening within that one. So that is why it's only a mental question we ask here because we think we are really divided. That's what we see. That's what we experience. Experience of many has been generated. Why? Because consciousness is conscious of an experience and experience is separated from the consciousness in order to become an experience. Otherwise it remains an experiencer. When the experiencer has an experience, the manyness is created right there. Purpose of the manyness. If one is love, and I mentioned that, people say God is love, the Creator is love. I've heard that in almost every religion, that the Creator is love. But 
it is love but not the experience of love the manyness it is the experience love becomes an experience knowledge becomes an experience everything that is in the one in totality of consciousness becomes an experience by creating the many and the many are first created at that very level so in our true home we are one and many at the same time because there is no time and we can experience both that's a unique experience you can't have it here you can't have it at the astral plane you can't have it at the causal plane you can't have it at the spiritual plane you can have it at the top at the top you get the real experience where the one and the many are experienced together now somebody who's having that experience sitting amongst us supposing comes like a human being ordinary human being sits with us we can never have any idea what that person is experiencing what is it's not an experience even what is knowing what is aware of and awareness is completely total and that is why when you have that awareness you come to know the truth the truth is there is only one consciousness and within that consciousness everything has been created as experience including the manyness including the minds including the separation including physical planes and when you reach there everything is put together has gone above the head of still here <laughs> does mechanical simran done while walking around and going about your day draw one draw one closer to the master in love or is it that mechanical repetition a distraction to experiencing that love does mechanical simran done while walking around and going about your day draw one closer to the master in love or is that mechanical repetition a distraction to distraction to experience that love it depends on what we mean by mechanical simran simran is repetition of words say language that we have learned here no matter what the words are no matter what language it is they are created words for this physical plane they can be repeated here and they can also be repeated in our imagination they can be repeated by the mind in in imaginary state and in physical state thoughts can be in words these are words that can only be used in these levels words have meaning when we say this person speaks deutsch speak german language they speak english language a different language is german guy they can't understand what's in english english man can't understand german one step higher in the state of imagination the state of astral communication one person communicates in german the other person understands in english automatic translation why is that because the method of communicating at that level is telepathic sometimes we have that experience here it's not happening because of here physically there is no means to translate language automatically but when telepathic communication takes place somebody thinks of a thought in one language the friend gets the same telepathic thought in that language it's automatic because what is transferred is not words the meaning of words what's intended to be said and that is the normal communication the next level of awareness so that is why these words have very limited use here they drop off and other sounds and other kinds of communications come up when we leave the body and we go into astral and causal planes and of course there's no language except love beyond that repetition of the simran or words that have been given as a mantra by a master are good to develop a habit words repeated with the tongue have not much value the words repeated by the mind have value because when you repeat the words of the mind mind can't think of anything else when you are trying to force the mind to repeat the words it's a means of concentrating your attention on the mind on the words it's just a means of concentrating attention mind also has a habit forming tendency it forms habits if you keep on doing the same thing 
mechanical repetition of words is useful to the extent that the mind forms a habit. And when is that habit useful? When you meditate, the mind is got habitual, so it starts repeating the word by itself. Otherwise, it is not a great step towards spiritual awareness. It only has a limited advantage. But while you are repeating the words, not mechanically, but remembering the master, remembering these words were given by the master, and most importantly, when you are remembering the words in the master's own voice, it really brings love and devotion to your heart. So that is why there are different ways in which we can do our simran and repeat the words. The best is sit quietly and do meditation or walk and be aware of the words of the master ringing in your head. That is why initiates of perfect living masters have been given that initiation and the words to repeat by the master, human form of the master in his own voice. And that voice when you capture and recall it, the best symbol, there is nothing like it. It comes with love and devotion automatically because you are remembering the master. Do you know, if you can remember the master without repeating words, it's better than mechanical repetition of words. But if you can link the words with the love and devotion for the master, the best way to do the similar. So remember, mechanical repetition has some value that at the time of meditation, the mind will pick up quickly. And the real value is when the repetition reminds you of the master. And when the repetition is a memory, recall of master's language, master's voice, it's the best repetition. Dearest adorable master, I have no a master. Okay. I have a confusion on the relation of sound meditation with developing love and devotion. In some satsangs you said the Shabd is our true self and connecting with it connects to our self and God. But then sometimes you say that no meditation of any kind connects us to God or home. So I feel there is a contradiction. Please, if you can explain. Okay, I'll remove the contradiction today. <laughs> I just explained in the morning that the self never changes. The self remains the same. All other is experience. Can we have an experience of the self if there was no other experience? Does the experiencer have an experience of the experiencer without any other experience so that, he, that the existence of consciousness is automatic by itself. Yes, it is. The consciousness is aware of itself at all times. The self never loses the consciousness of itself. You all know the self is there. You are thinking. You are using a mind to think, using senses to work, you are using a body. Self is constantly known to us. Therefore, the self knows itself, but is there something experienced in the self? Yes, it is. The self can be experienced in physical plane like a sound coming from the self. And that's a very interesting thing. Sound coming from the self. It's, it, we can call it meditation on the self. Normally, we do meditation around the self. We repeat the repeating words, thinking of master, making pictures, all around. But we do not have any experience of the self itself. The experience of the self is called Shabd, sound. It is a connected experience and does not go away from one level to another. I called it earlier. The self remains the same at all levels. The sound connects at all levels also. That means the sound is here, sound is there. Sound in a different form is right to the top. Now I'll explain what the different form is. The form that the sound is being used here, outside, are, we call it varan atmak shabd. That means sound that can be used for language, for speaking, writing and so on. 
which you are using now. I am using English right now. To communicate with you, I have to use sound in a language. And this is called Varanatmak Shabd or that which can be spoken, that which can be written and communicated like this. But we don't need this as explained in the astral plane. The thoughts can transfer the meaning without using this, these words. Then what kind of sound is there? There you have a sound that emanates from the self but resembles something else. Physically we want to go to the astral plane. If we can attach ourselves to the sound of the soul, we are pulling our attention back to the self and the other sound will start coming in. If you hear that sound which is coming from the self and not hearing this side or that side, roaring trains or um, chirping crickets and little bells ringing which are all around it. But the sound of the self is very interesting. It resembles the sound of a big bell. It's just a coincidence. That is why we don't realize why bells were put up or the bell trees in the churches, why bells are rung in all the temples, why this kind of sound is being used. When the bell sound is there, it does not come from any side. It comes from self. And we are not aware when the self is, so it looks like it's all around us, like a surround sound. This is different sound than the spoken sound I'm using and continues to be a very major part of the astral plane. So instead of varanatmakshab, we call it dhunatmakshab. That means it's mostly a tone, a sound that's in the music of it is the sound, not the words that we make out of it. It's good enough there. It changes again. If we go from the astral plane to the causal plane, the sound is again from the self but changes. And it looks like it's a sound that has already been there all the time. Here, if somebody now rings the bell, before that I was not hearing, now I'm hearing. In the causal plane, it looks, we have been hearing it all the time. It's not that the sound is coming now. Sound was there all the time. I was hearing all the time at that level. I just blocked my ears and therefore I came into the physical and astral self and didn't hear it. It doesn't mean sound was not there. That's a very strange experience that you have a sound inside you at the causal plane, which is running all the time. And you know it's running all the time as you go there, as you've been hearing it all the time there. In that self of yours, you're hearing all the time. Therefore, the dhun atmakshab has been termed in our Indian literature as anhadshab. Anhad means it has no beginning, no middle, no end. It's infinite. It's not merely called infinite because the universe is infinite. It's called infinite because your experience of the sound is that you have been hearing it infinitely. And that's a different form, still coming from the self. You cross over beyond the mind, beyond this creation altogether, beyond all these three words. What does the sound become? It can't be a sound anymore. There you discover the sound was not coming from yourself. It was the self. That happens only what they call it parabrahm. That means beyond the creation of the mind. In Parvram, the sound show that you are, you are the sound. Till then, it is not you, yourself. You are separating yourself as an experiencer. There you found the sound, sound was merely a connection that continues from one level to another. Other things change. Levels change. Sound does not. Sound continues. Sound moves you from one to the other. And there, there when you discover that, it's called Sar Shabd. Sar Shabd means real sound. Real sound is itself. When you go to true home, you find that the sound generated from there. Even the sound we heard in the physical plane at every level that changed like that was generated from there. So it's a connecting link just exactly like the self. So the sound is the self. But merely practicing sound here and hearing various kinds of sounds, that meditation doesn't connect you. The sound is being used right here in meditation to pick up a sound. Out of several sounds you can hear. And several sounds, both positive and negative, can be heard in early meditation. You pick up the right sound which comes from the self. Then, then only you are moving toward the self. Then only you are going within. Otherwise, you are without. From the side, sounds are coming. Some say, oh, listen to the right side. Listen, don't listen to left side. Oh, listen to left side. What does it mean, left side, right side sounds? 
which means nothing because the brain is situated that it functions, logical function one side and intuitive function on the other side. Therefore, we separate them and say they sound listen to the right side. They know the reason for it. But it doesn't mean that the right side is, is our true home or something. Or right side is taking us anywhere. No, it will take you to the right side. I met people, my friends, spent 20, 30 years listening to sound on the right side. And they said, why didn't we make any progress? I said, you made good progress on the right side. <laughs> so you didn't make any progress toward yourself. You are not on the right side, you are not on the left side, you are in the center of the head. In wakeful state, you are in the center of the head. Therefore, you miss the real sound. So the real sound comes from the center and connects all the way to the top. Meditating on sound by itself means nothing, but if you meditate on the real sound, it is like, it's like a jumping up, it's like a, like a leap forward. The attention is gathered to the self faster by listening to the sound of the self than any other means. That is why this particular yoga, which I practiced, the great master taught, is called Surta Shabd Yoga. Surta means attention, Shabd means sound, Yoga means union with the ultimate. So the, that is why it's really a path of using sound within ourselves. And that sound is resounding in everybody. I remember there was a, a robber gangster in a gang that used to rob places and they heard that there was a dera being built. It's a long old story when the dera in India was being built and great master's time it was still being built uh, and before him it was a very few huts only and then later on his, in his time a house came up where he lived and many houses came up. And people like me and my parents also bought houses there. And the data was being built. The great master decided that we'll have a large auditorium because smaller auditoriums were getting too small for their meetings and more and more people were coming. So the designers of the Satsanghar, that be the place where the Satsang, where the meetings were held, the discourses were held, they designed it that there will be gold topics. We'll make some nice minarets and make it look very nice, shiny gold tops. So an appeal was made, anybody wanting to donate any gold, any surplus gold you have, we'll smelt it and make it on top of the building. And so many people gave their gold. So many women gave their bangles. Other people don't. We want to see our contribution in the building. And the building was coming up and gold was all collected. This came to be known to the gang. And the gang said, that's the place to rob the gold before they can put on the building. So they sent one of its guys, an explorer, to go and do a recce, what they call reconnaissance. So where the gold is at this time. So we grab it before they put on the building. It's very difficult to get from the building. But let's collect it. So that guy, it's a Muslim guy, and he came to explore. At that time when he came, the great master was giving a discourse. And people were all there, attending there. And he moved about in the houses which were lying there. And uh, he asked some ladies, ladies, why aren't you going to this meeting? Your master is giving a talk. Oh, no, no, we are taking up the gold, taking care of the gold. Where is the gold? There is that box. He said, this is the easiest way to find gold here. He went to another house and there were some children playing. What are you doing here? Playing? No, no, we are taking care of gold. There, we have saved some gold here. Where is the gold? Oh, it's a top shelf there. They all revealed in the houses where the gold was. He said, this is the easiest recce I've ever done. So, a thought came to him. What kind of a man is giving a talk that even the, these Owners of gold are not are willing to take a risk with that gold, leave with the ladies and children and go to listen to him. What kind of talk can he give that they don't care for the material wealth? He said, I should go and see what is he talking about. So as he left the place and he was walking, he stood at the back. At that moment, by coincidence, the master was saying, that real sound comes from within and is the secret to the true home and even gangsters and robbers have it. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> he said, how does he know I'm here? <laughs> I have to wait and ask him. So he waited. And at the end of the discourse, he walked up to the guild master. He said, how did you know I am a robber and a gangster? He said, I don't know you at all. Who are you? He said, no, you know it. I came at the back and you told me even gangsters and robbers have the sound inside. And with that sound, you can go into their true home. I'm a Muslim. Are you telling me that that sound is more important than my karma? It's more important than this. He says, it is the real karma. I'm not talking of anything else. You heard of Bangi Aswani, the sound coming from the sky? That's the sound I'm talking of. All you need to hear the sound is just be accepted by a Murshid Kamal, a perfect living master. He got so much affected by this conversation, few minutes conversation. He said, I'm going to stay here. Now this guy's name was Shadi and he stayed with the great master. Made most rapid progress. I was very young and he, great master asked him, what will you do here? Nobody lives here free. They all do some seva. What kind of work can you do? He said, I can only rob people. I never learned anything else. Great Master said, no, no, that's not good. I, I don't want you to rob people here, just to live here. You have to do something else. He said, even in the case of robbery, what did the gang do? Travel around, move? Oh, I used to repair the dynam dynamo, the armature, and the electrical things in my truck, in our getaway truck. He said, okay, we'll get you an armature, we'll get you a dynamo. So the first generator, which was run with diesel oil and it had a belt on it, was installed and he ran it. I used to come sometimes uh, go and work the belt. You know, it had to be started manually. I still remember that with Shadi, I would go and say, I want to move the belt myself. Think old, old memories. But he had such wonderful experiences. He went back in time on the timeline and was able to see not only the prophet, which he was very fond of, but also went back, even saw Jesus Christ and even saw many other masters of the past. They're all there. Nothing disappears on the timeline. It's just a matter of where you are. So he had great experiences and great master allowed him sometimes to tell these experiences in small discourses. So this sound which we're talking of is something once you hear it, it lifts you up. Almost like you feel you are being taken off your uh, off the ground. It's the fastest way to pull attention because you are listening to something in yourself. And that's why it's the it's one of the most important things. Excuse me for a minute. I didn't put it off again. <laughs> you didn't hear it, did you? <laughs> this is not that sound I'm talking about. <laughs> That is why, that is why it's, uh, it's very important to know that the sound of the self resembles a bell. I'm giving you a little hint, but it resembles a bell. You see, bell has a string. Dong, then there's a peal of the bell. The, so the sound inside has very little of that. Dong, no hit on it. It's very melodious, very beautiful. The peel is really the appealing thing. When you listen to it, the peel becomes longer and longer. Sometimes some people feel it's kind of a whistle or some kind of a... Some people compare it with the conch, that say we blow a conch. So it's a continuous sound, but in the beginning it looks like it's got a vibration up and down and then it becomes longer and longer. And that's the sound, if you can hear, fastest way to get your attention inside. Last question. Well, this is only confusion. All resolved. Thank you very much for coming. See you next month.